part two. Somebody say part two. Part two of the XO series, I am ready. Listen to me, praise the Lord. Listen to me, our first service was so incredible. It was so good, so much great content there. I wanna move quickly so that I can get to everything. Today's message is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna give you the title before I read any scriptures because I have a lot of stuff to cover. And, uh, and so today is gonna be a little bit different. Today, look at your name and say, today, today. we're gonna be dealing with Excelling in your emotions. Uh huh. Take a pause. And don't say this to your neighbor, but I'm saying this to you guys. This includes everybody. This is not just relationship people that are in a marriage, in a, in a situationship, or in a, a boyfriend, girlfriend thing. If you got a cutie booty, if you ain't got one, it's, we talking to everybody today because your emotions are important and whether you have a work relationship or whether you have a romantic relationship, your emotions are gonna show up. And so today we're gonna to talk about how your emotions should show up, what that should look like and what God thinks about those emotions. Can we do it? Good stuff. Let's pray. Awesome God, give us grace today. My goodness gracious, we needed grace in the first service. Give us some grace in this second service, Lord. I know you got some things you wanna to say to your people today. You got some things you want to teach. You got some things you want to reveal. You got some things you want to heal. And so, Lord, we just start out by saying we give you permission to just come in and do your thing. We're open to receive what you have for us today. Help us to move better, to, to operate better, to be emotionally healthy. By the end of this message, I pray that you would challenge us to change in whatever way you see fit. And for those watching online too, Father, we just give you glory and honor for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, uh, who are you rooting for tonight? Who are you rooting for tonight? 49ers, Chiefs, the Bucks. Go Bucks! Hallelujah. I don't care. Yes, hallelujah. Yeah, I'm going to have a prayer meeting tonight. Hallelujah. Prayer meeting with some with some chicken enchilada dip on the side or something. I don't even care. I, I want to see our bucks in the bowl, but it's all good. But yes, it's going to be a good night. And one thing for sure is that tonight will be full of emotions. Oh, emotions will be all over the place tonight. It's fun. You're going to have emotions while you're watching the game. You're going to have emotions while you're watching. Hallelujah. You're going to have emotions while you're watching the Super Bowl commercials. You're going to have emotions while watching the halftime show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to have emotions tonight. Because emotions are real, and emotions make you cry sometimes. Emotions make you sad sometimes. But most of all, they make you fall in love sometimes. Some of my 90s people in the building giving me some street cred right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Emotions are a real thing. Emotions are a real thing. But how many of you guys know that there's a difference between your feelings and your emotions? Mm. I love it. Feelings can be defined as an emotional state or reaction, okay? Emotions can be described as a natural instinctive state of mind deriving from one's circumstances, mood, or relationships with others. And so emotions tell me, that tells me a couple of things. I can have feelings and not be in relationship with people, but I can't have emotions and not be in relationship with people. Because every time I show up, my emotions are going to show up with me, good or bad. Amen? And so let's talk a little bit about what the Bible says about your emotions. Because how many of you guys know that God actually cares about your emotions? He has a lot to say about how you feel. And so let's talk a little bit about that because I think this is important for you to be able to see. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 30 says, do not contend with a man for a reason, okay, uh, with, with a man for, for no reason when he has done you no harm. It says, listen, watch how you contend or how you deal with people. Your emotions can get you in some troubles if you're dealing with folks the wrong way, okay? Proverbs 10 and 12 says, hatred 
stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Proverbs 10 and 19 says, when words are many, transgressions, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Let's go, somebody. Proverbs 11 and 12 says, whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense. Hello, somebody. That's some good stuff right there. I just took a step back right there because whoever belittles his neighbor, whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense. And so if your neighbor is talking trash about you, they are lacking sense, the Bible says. Amen. Don't tell them that, but just know that. Amen. <laughs> but a man of understanding remains silent. A man of understanding remains silent. It's so good. Proverbs 11 and 17 says, a man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. Man, Proverbs 12 and 18 says, there is one who, there's one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So, so good. Proverbs 12 and 25, anxiety Okay, yep, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Proverbs 14 and 7, leave the presence of a fool. Ooh, that's some good stuff right there. The Bible says you have permission to leave the presence of fools. So don't act foolish and I won't leave. Somebody going to use that this week. You, you acting foolish? Is that, was that foolish I heard? Say something else foolish. I'm out. <laughs> Leave the presence of a fool, for there, for, for there you do not meet words of knowledge. Proverbs 14 and 29. Whoever, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. Amen. So good, Proverbs 14 and 30. A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. Envy makes the bones rot. This is some good stuff. Proverbs 15 and 1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh, a harsh word stirs up anger. So good, so good. Let me give, me, give you one more of these. Let me see. Let me go down to Proverbs 17 and 27. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. <laughs> ah, some good stuff. So you could be a fool and nobody would know it if you just keep your mouth shut. You could be in the room looking smart. <laughs> don't say nothing. Because if you say something, they're going to know you don't belong in the room. That's so good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good. Even a fool who keeps his silence is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. So good. Guess what all these scriptures have in common? They all have something to do with how we feel and how we express emotions. Amen? And so if God has this much to say about our emotional state of being, that means that he actually cares about how we feel and about how we express our emotions. And for all of you guys are saying, well, either that's, that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. Uh, you ain't got to be all acting all emotional all the time. Why you got to be so emotional and stuff? You know, why we, why, why we got to cry? Nobody got to be doing all that crying and stuff. Why we got to be all like that? For all my guys in the room, they want to be too macho. I got some girls like that too, you know, that too macho to cry, too tough to, too tough to be kind, uh, all that kind of stuff. I need you to understand that Jesus is our example. And Jesus gives us such a great illustration of emotional intelligence. And he models emotional intelligence while he was here on earth in a way that we ought to take note of. I love this. I love that Jesus was not just a man. He was not just a man of God, but he was a man full of emotions. He was a man that was full of feelings. The Bible says that he was in connection with our feelings. There was nothing that, he, that we haven't felt that he has not overcome and felt himself. He had to embody himself in this dirt suit that we live in and then take on all of the feelings and emotions and all of the things that come along with it in order to redeem us. The Bible calls him our kinsman redeemer. 
you can't be kin to me and not share some of my traits. Oh, this is good. So he shared our traits. He took on the weight of who we were and wore our sin and our shame. And he came, it came with all of the feels. Somebody say feels. Yeah, listen to this, John 11 and 32. It says, then Jesus, then when Mary had come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying to him, Lord, Lord, if you, you had been here, my brother, he would not be, he would not be dead right now. She's talking about Lazarus. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? I like it when Jesus sees something wrong. He wants to fix it right away. If you show Jesus something that's wrong, he wants to fix it right away. If you'll reveal it to him, he'll heal you instantly. He has the ability to do it. And Jesus says, where did you lay him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And verse 35 is the shortest verse and biblical history, and all of us know it by heart because it was the first verse you ever were taught to memorize. And it says, Jesus wept. Could you imagine a, 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 a man that is all God having enough empathy to express emotions in that moment of weeping and crying for someone else because they were crying and weeping to make sure that he expressed healthy emotional maturity. Amen. Jesus was an emotional man, but Jesus was in control of his emotions. And before you check out on me because you're not married and you're not with somebody right now and maybe you live in the single life, praise the Lord, I'm glad you live in single. I'm happy that you live in single and that's cool and all, but can I tell you something? Even though you live in single, you're going to have to work with somebody. Nine to five on Monday through Friday, you got somebody you got to deal with. You got bosses and supervisors that you got to connect with. You have family, even if you work at home, because I hear you say, I work at home, Pastor. Ha, gotcha. <laughs> I ain't got to deal with nobody's emotions but my dog. <laughs> you still got family members that you have to see. You still got people you got to come in contact with. There are folks at the grocery store that you might have to come in contact with. And if you order your groceries online, the door dasher that brings your food to the door, you still gonna have to deal with some emotions. The Instacart person that's gonna bring your order to you, yeah, you're gonna still have to deal with some emotions. So you don't get to live a life free of not expressing emotions with other human beings. So you're in the right place at the right time. So take some good notes so you can make the right decisions. Amen? So we want to figure out how we excel in our emotions. This is important because Jesus shows a massive amount of emotions in this story. Jesus shows a massive amount of emotions of emotions when he went into, in, in, into, into uh, the church where they were money changing in his father's house. He made his, they made his father's house a den of thieves. He came in and was driving them out. The Bible says he was driving them out. Do you think he did that real cute and nice? Get out of, for the father's house. <laughs> I would like for you to leave right now, please. Could you please put that down and put that table? I'm going to turn this table over slowly. Thank you so much. Can you get out? And how about you? How, can you get out too? Thank you so much. No, no, no. I could imagine Jesus showing some emotion right there because he was angry they had turned his father's house into something it shouldn't have been. And because he was in touch with our humanity, he showed and expressed emotions as he turned over tables. What about his emotions on the cross? Can you imagine being beaten and scourged and having skin torn off your back and a crown of thorns placed in your head, uh, 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 nails going through your hands and your wrists for a crime you didn't commit? It's like putting someone on death row for something they didn't do. Having the electric chair and they, everyone knows that they're innocent, especially they, them. Can you imagine showing healthy emotions at that point? Can you imagine how hard it was for Jesus to look down and see them exchanging, uh, gambling for his clothing as he's hanging on the cross, humiliated and naked, and look down upon them and not say, y'all get on my nerves. I hate all y'all. I'm not dying for y'all. Y'all too? No, nah, y'all going to hell. <laughs> 
I mean, the stuff that some of us would choose to say in a moment. I'm, can I keep it real? Oh, you, oh, you making a mockery of this here I just did? Y'all down here laughing and joking at my feet while I'm hanging on this cross with my last breaths of life. Mm-hmm. You going to hell, you going to hell too. Y'all going y'all gonna to burn together. Burn! Burn, baby, burn. Right, listen, we would put them all in, we would put them somewhere they wouldn't belong, okay? But did you see how Jesus expresses his emotions in that moment? Jesus, whew, Jesus looks down upon people who were gambling for his clothing, making a mockery of his crucifixion, and says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What type of emotional maturity must Jesus had to be able to emote in that kind of way? And I'm telling you, my friends, the, this is the type of emotional maturity that Jesus came to give us. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We came to be like Christ. We are supposed to be like him, not just in his attitude and not just in his character and not just in his disposition, but we're supposed to be like Jesus in his emotional state of being as well. Jesus came to exchange everything that was bad for everything that he was good and everything he was able to do we're supposed to do even the more so we're supposed to have healthy emotional mindsets and healthy emotional maturity healthy lives emotionally as well can I get a good amen, amen. so since having a good healthy state of emotions is so important to us it's so important to our romantic relationships, our friendships, our work life, our family members, school, all, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here's my question to you is that I know we spend a lot of time working on our IQ and making sure that we're highly intelligent. Praise the Lord. Y'all got more degrees than thermometers. I know. <laughs> doctorates and masters and all that wonderful stuff. Do you have a doctorate and masters in emotional intelligence? How well are you at emotional maturity? How well do you emote in moments that change that are unexpected? Because if you're not working just as hard at your EQ as you are at your IQ, you're, I wrote this down, and this, this is what made me write the sermon. I thought about this before I ever wrote the sermon. IQ will give me the blueprint to build an incredible home. EQ will give me the peace that I need to live in the home forever. I was driving home and I said to my wife, I'm watching people build lives together, build lives, period, and I'm watching them build incredible things. They have all of the ingredients to build something great, but the internal ingredient of emotional maturity is not there, and I'm watching doors close. I'm watching relationships fall apart. I'm watching people lose jobs. I'm watching things happen in their lives that is not a result of them not paying attention in math class. It's not a result of them not doing reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's not a result of any of those things. It's a result of an absence of emotional maturity to where you have been trained and understand how to emote in every situation. And maybe it's not just everybody else that don't like you. Maybe it's not just the people who won't hire you. Maybe it's not just the folks that you work with and every supervisor that you came in contact with. Maybe it's not your last six girlfriends. Help! The look y'all just gave me. Get out of my business, pastor. We talking about nothing like that. We talking about my business. All up in my mail. All up in the Kool-Aid and know the flavors. So how do we grow in our emotional maturity? So glad you asked. I started digging this week. And I ran across some really great articles, and I found some things on uh, the, Harvard, uh, the, the Harvard Business Review as I was searching. 
And it was so good, the stuff that I was able to find that had biblical value to it, that was just blessing my life and blowing my mind. I'm telling you something. It's interesting because we start focusing on EQ now in our marriage counseling sessions more now than we ever have before because we know that that couples having e healthy emotional maturity is probably just as important as everything else that they need. Yes, you need good credit. Yes, you need to have your life together. Yes, you need to make sure that uh, you are in agreement about how you're going to uh, uh, parent children. Yes, you need to have a budget that you agree on. Yes, you need to have your money stuff figured out and how you're going to do that. But you also need to have your emotions figured out because your emotions can cause everything to fall apart and your emotions can cause you to get in the house and not be able to live there long because your emotions exploded so much and your anger took over or your sadness took over or your depression took over or your passive spirit took over because of something that happened to you in your life that caused trauma that caused you to emote the wrong type of emotions in the situation that you find yourself Can we keep talking? Yes. So how do we grow in our emotional intelligence? How do we grow in our emotional intelligence? Well, as I begin to research this week, I found some things that I think are worth taking note. Can we write some notes? Yes. Note takers slay the devil. Right. <laughs> It'd behoove us to take some notes. Ah, all right. Number one, if you're going to grow in your emotional intelligence, you need emotional self-awareness. Emotional self-awareness means that I am aware of who I am emotional. Emotionally, sorry. I know what I do when I get in stressful situations emotionally. I know that my voice changes when I'm around certain scenarios. I know that my tone gets high when I get hot. I know that when you put me in this particular type of scenario, my emotions are gonna respond this way. I know I'm gonna give you stank face <laughs> when you talk and say certain things to me, so I'm aware of how I emote in every scenario. I know the type of emotions I'm gonna show on my face when I show up to the family reunion, where I know they've been talking about, about me behind my back, and they've been saying stuff, and they've been backstabbing, and it already got back to me, and they're gonna smile at me at the family reunion and say, hey girl, you want a plate? I know what, they, I know what emotions I show in situations like that. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. You know how you can really become aware, uh, self-aware of your emotions, especially if you're married? Is you, you take a glance in the mirror, what mirror are you talking about? I'm talking about your spouse. Can I tell you something to every married person in the room? Your spouse will tell you things about your emotions that you are unaware of. I'm going to turn around this way. <laughs> I know when y'all going to give me that seared look. What you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about your spouse know everything about you. I'm talking about your spouse know how your, 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 you change up on I'm, I'm talking about your spouse know you're going to get that stank face when you ask them to do certain things. I'm talking about your spouse who know of everything about you, and they keep telling you you need to work on that because you, you can't be looking at them like that. Can't be talking to them. You can't be talking like that to them all. You can't, you can't be acting that way. You can't act sheepish and scared. Do you, you see how you turn into a little mouse when you get around this certain type of group of people? And you, talk to them, you can't let your boss talk to you that way. You, this is the sixth time you've let a boss just push you over this way. You've got to stand up for yourself. Your spouse will tell you a lot about your emotions. And so I'm telling you, if you're in a marriage, please listen to the echoes of your spouse because if they're telling you things that are going on inside of you and that you need to pay attention to, you need to lean into it and pay attention to it. All of my people who are not married, you need to pay attention to the echoes of the other people that are around you in life. Mm. Pay attention to the last six bosses who gave you reviews and they said the same thing about you. Pay attention to the last six boyfriends who told you you had anger management issues. <laughs> Pay attention to the last five girlfriends who told you you needed to fix your credit and you still hadn't fixed it and you still, it's still jacked up and you're still not ready to be a husband or nobody because you don't even have a house to call your own because you still live with your mama.
Y'all ain't praying hard enough. <laughs> Pay attention to the echoes of your friends who love you so much that they get around you and they try to tell you, girl, you need to work on that. Stop going to the club to find a man. You ain't going to find the right one there. Girl, you need to come to Courageous Church. We got a lot of single men up in there, girl. I'm telling you. All my single men say amen. amen. All right, brothers, I'm looking out for y'all. If you were married and you said amen, I'm praying for you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That brother heard all the men say amen. Amen. You gonna have some problems on the way home, brother. Don't be blaming the pastor. I'm just saying. It is not the pastor's fault. What I'm saying to all of you is something or someone is telling you about your emotional state right now. Are you taking notes of who's talking, who's echoing, who's trying to help you see where you are? Because if you don't know where you are, you can't move forward. If you don't know where you are and who you become when you get angry, you can't fix it. If you don't know who you are and how you get sheepish when you get in certain situations, you'll never change it. If you don't know who you are as it relates to being overly emotional, you'll never be able to work on that. Are you self-aware of who you are and who you become when you get emotional? Number one. Number two. Emotional self-management. Now, this is the stage that you go to once you realize where you are emotionally. You cannot manage what you do not know. This step is only for people who have figured out and are self-aware enough to know where you are. Because here's the catch. When I'm aware that I get triggered by certain individuals and I become emotional in a certain kind of way in certain scenarios, I know I'm about to go into a meeting where the boss is going to remind me or trigger me in a way that I was traumatized when I was six. And so, therefore, I go into it with a mindset where I'm going to manage myself in a certain way because I know I'm about to go into that situation. Oh, this is good. Y'all don't want to keep it real with me now. This is, when you, this, is, this is when you do your self-talk before you go into the meeting. This is where you say the things that are needed. Like you can say things, if, if, if you've been struggling with insignificance, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and never beneath. Lord, I thank you that I am fearfully and wonderfully made in your likeness and your image. Lord, I thank you that you made me look like you, sound like you, think like you. Lord, the earth is the Lord's in the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. Father, I thank you that you made me the way you did. I I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. And so as I step into this job interview, Father, I'm not going to be intimidated or belittle myself or, or discredit my own opportunity to get the job even before I sit before the boss because greater is he that is in me than he that is against me in the world. You see, this is what happens when you're self-aware. You can manage your emotions before you come to the situation. What would happen if you learn how to e control your emotions before you stood before the door? What would happen if you were able to understand who you were and know how you're built and know the type of things that you do emotionally before God brought you into the, into the greatest relationship of your life? I often tell people who are dating, wouldn't it be a shame for the best person that God has ever sent you to come into your life and you're not the best version of yourself? Oh, it would be a travesty for God to send the right person at the wrong time. You haven't done your work. You haven't figured out how you're triggered. You hadn't figured out what happened when you were six that caused you to be rageful and upset. You hadn't figured out that you're just trying to protect yourself because that little girl in you is scared. And every time you see a certain type of individual, you, you bow up because I can't, I can't let you take me up like that. I'm going to make sure I protect myself. Oh, what you, my y'all, what you want to do? What you want to do, uh-huh? If you're not aware, self-aware enough to know that about yourself, you'll blow the job. You'll lose the job. You'll mess up on the job interview when they challenge you and they feel like they're being strong with you because you're not aware enough to manage your emotions. You can't manage what you don't know. And after you get into this stage of em em um, uh, emotionally self-management, then we take it to the next step. Look, we hadn't even got to people yet. Now we're finally getting there. The next one is emotional social awareness. These are all steps that connect to each other. When I'm aware of myself, 
when I'm able to manage myself, which means that I know how I know how I work, I know how I tick, I understand what's up with me, I understand what happened to me, I understand the work that I'm working on doing on myself so I can become the best version of myself. Hello, somebody. Once I'm in that position, now I'm in a great position to be socially aware of other people that are in my sphere. I can now be socially aware and show empathy towards people that I work with, show empathy and respect to those that I, that I come in contact with because I'm aware enough now to, to not spend all of my time trying to figure out what's wrong with me. I've done that work. I know what's going on with me, and now I can focus on managing my relationships around me based on what I know about myself. I know, oh, this is good. I know how to interact with certain personalities because I know that particular personality is going to create this type of emotion in me. So now I'm preparing myself to engage with this type of personality so that when I come into contact with this person, it's not weird or awkward. I prepared myself. Are you with me? This is how you become socially aware of where you are and what's going on inside of you. You're able to show empathy. It's a good sign that I'm socially aware when I'm able to empathize with someone else and not just think about myself. Not just be moved by what I feel, but moved by what they're feeling. This is growing in my emotional intelligence where I'm able to do that for someone else and not just think about myself. And the last area that you want to think about growing emotional intelligence is, is relationship management. Now I go from my my social circles to my closer, intimate relationships. People like spouses, girlfriend, boyfriends, family members. There's a certain way that you can emote around people you are closer to that you cannot emote around people you have a work relationship with. Oh, come on. Can I get a good amen right there? I need, some, I need some mature people in the room to understand. There is a way to carry yourself when you're around your kids in the car on the way to the restaurant that you can't carry yourself when you're on the way to the business meeting with other people and colleagues that you work with. Amen. Oh, this is good. See, this is, this is emotional maturity at its finest. This is helping you to become so emotionally aware that I'm being conscious of how I emote my emotions. One day my kids were at the house and I was having a conversation that was just for the house, you know. I'm, I'm not pastor, I'm daddy now. I'm daddy, I'm having daddy conversation. I'm, I'm being loose, I'm being free. I'm saying what I need to say, how I talk around my kids. Don't ask my kids how I talk, that ain't none of your business. <laughs> so don't be cornering my kid. How your daddy talk when he at home? One day, one day I didn't realize that one of my kids had an earbud in their ear and they were talking to a friend in the background. They had them just in the background. I'm just talking. I'm, you know, I'm being daddy. I'm, yeah, da, da, da. and you know, da, 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 da. and it's my thought about that political, da, da, da. I, mean, I thought about this in the football team. I was doing my thing. Found out somebody was listening in in that car. I said, hey, <laughs> hang it up. <laughs> this isn't the setting for that. Because I understand where the line is as it relates to my professional life and my personal life. And I manage my personal relationships a little different with my emotions than I manage my social relationships. Are you with me today? Can I tell you something? God wants you to be healthy in your emotions so that every relationship that he has for you, whether it is a friendship, whether it is a social relationship, whether it's a small circle of friends that you're connected to, whether it's a work relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship with your husband or your wife, whether it's a relationship with you and your children, God wants you to have healthy emotions. Can I tell you, let me read one scripture to you in closing. This is so good. I feel the wheels are turning in this room, and that's a good thing. The Holy Spirit's at work. Proverbs 25 and 28 says this in the New Living Living Translation. It says, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. It says a person that has no control over their emotions is like a city with broken walls. That means that anybody can come in at any time. And anybody can go out at any time. 
There is no structure or safety around you. Ooh, that means you're not a safe person to be around. That means you have no limitations or boundaries. There's no lines in your life where things stop and start because of your inability to be mature enough emotionally to know where things lie. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. Bow your heads in the room. I just, I feel the Holy Spirit is just dealing with somebody in this moment right here. And, and I, I came as a bulldog to go after it. I, I'm, I'm not scared to say what the Lord told me to say because I know there's some people that are watching this message online that are listening back to this podcast and that's in this room currently that need the Holy Spirit to come in and just do a rework with your emotions. My goodness, my emotions. If you just would just take a moment here and just allow the Holy Spirit to just deal with your heart right there where you are. And if those of you guys who are trying to figure out what does that mean, that means that there's some conviction that's happening on the inside of you one of those points that I hit is sticking out at you and you are thinking about that thing and God is highlighting some situation in your life where you're not expressing emotions in a healthy way let him highlight it right there where you are just sit in it yeah sometimes you don't need to be loud and all of that just let the Holy Spirit get in all right now you identify that area now we're going to say a significant prayer. And I believe something's going to happen when we say this prayer. Everyone in this room repeat after me. Say, Father, I invite you in to my emotions. Manage my emotions. Help me deal with my emotions. Reveal what hurt me. Reveal what tried to stop me. Show me my generational curses that I am allowing to come out through my emotions. Today, Holy Spirit, I give you permission to help me, to help me grow in my emotional maturity. I want to be emotionally healthy. I want to be a safe person to be around. I want to love people. I want to respect people. I want to live with boundaries. I want to be a healthy person. I invite you right now, change me from within. Do the work that's necessary so I can be emotionally intelligent. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you said that prayer, can you just give the Lord a praise right there? Oh, come on, can, can, if you're excelling in your emotions today, can you just give the Lord a praise right there? Wow. Sheesh. Well, before we leave this room, it would be so bad for me not to do this moment. And you guys that have been a part of this church for a while, you already know what's about to come. Right now, in the next couple of minutes, is the most significant part of this service. It's probably, it's, it's more important than the, the message I just preached. It's going to, it's, this is, this, what I'm about to say in just a couple of minutes is life change for someone in this room. This is about to be the start of your emotions getting the healing that it truly needs. Because I'm going to tell you something. You've been trying to heal your emotions without God. And God says, you can't do that without me. I created your emotions. And I can rearrange and recreate and give you back whatever it is that you think you've lost that's causing you to be an unhealthy person. And most importantly, disconnected from me. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're in this room and you say in this moment, man, I, I have an emotion of being disconnected from God. I feel that I am far away from the Father. If you're watching us online, if you're standing in this or sitting in this room right now, you say, I am far away and I want to draw near to the Lord before I leave this room, before I leave this room. Can you just, Pastor, can you just include me in your closing prayer? I, I want to be a part of those, that, that group of people you're, you're calling on right now. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand and say, Lord, I just want to be back close to you. Maybe you were close to him and your heart was close to him. Your, 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 your mind was close to him. You were healthier when you were closer to him. Emotionally, you felt better. Maybe you've never given your life to him. Maybe you've never decided to let him in on your life. Today, the Lord is knocking at the door of your heart. He wants in. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand if you're in that category. One, this is your day of salvation. Two, harden not your heart. Three, hands up if you want Jesus. I see you. I see you. I see you. Anybody else? I see you there. I see you. Anybody else? I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. 
I see you, I see you. Thank you for being so honest all around this room. I see you. Anybody else say, listen, I need to make him my Lord and Savior. I need to recommit my heart back to him. I need to come back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I know what's going on with my emotions. I need Jesus. I need him. I, I had him once and my emotions were more stable when he was in my life. Anybody else? I'm just taking five more seconds for anybody else that needs Jesus. You need him. You need him in your heart. You need him in your life. Anybody else? If you're watching online, just put a hand up in the chat right there. If you're watching us online, put a hand in the chat. If you're live, we're, we're, we're with you. We're going to pray with you right there. Hands down. Thank you so much for being so honest. About 10 people in this room raised your hands for salvation. Coming back, rededication. Right there where you are, just put your heads down. I want to say a prayer. You don't even have to repeat it with me. Just believe this in your heart. Father, I thank you for every person that raised their hand in this room that's far from you that wants to be near, that disconnected from you that wants to be back reconnected. Lord, that's seeing unhealthy emotions in their lives because of their lack of connection with you. Lord, I'm praying right now that you would draw them near to you, pull them back in, allow them to experience your grace. God, save them from their sins, rescue them from the trauma that they have been living through. And Lord, I thank you that this day is going to be a day that they mark in history. This Super Bowl Sunday is a day they're going to say, I gave my life to Jesus. I decided to follow him. I decided to come after him. I decided to rededicate my life to him. And in this moment, Father, your word declares that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that God rose him from the dead, we shall I'll be saved. I thank you for saving every person who raised their hand today. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. I said somebody shout amen. Jeez. All right, all right. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. My goodness, what a great Sunday. Oh, I thank God for the Holy Spirit who goes, who will do whatever it takes. Some of y'all had no idea what we was going to talk about today. Like, man, you didn't mess me all up, Pastor. You did emotions and stuff. Why? Because the Holy Spirit needs you to get this. He wanted you to hear this. He wants you to grow in your emotional maturity. He wants you to be more emotional intelligent. And you're going to be better today because of the word. Amen. Come on, we're going to commit to that. We're going to be better today because of the word. Amen. <laughs> so good. Okay, guys, as you get ready to leave here, I just want to remind you we're having church this Tuesday. I'm inviting everybody out, even if you're not a part of our 202 class. I'm going to be dealing with soul ties. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. Just make sure you show up. Be ready. We're going to be praying for people. It's going to be a special night. It's going to be really, really special. I want you here. It's going to be a good, good night. If you know somebody, bring somebody with you. It's an open night this Tuesday night. It's going to be great. And all of my men in the room who are married and who have a cutie booty, you still have three days to get yourself a gift for your girl. So make sure you get on it in Jesus' name. You have been officially warned by the Holy Spirit to take care of your woman in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hands up as a sign of receiving. I just want to speak a blessing over you before you leave. Father, I thank you for every person here in this room and watching online. Father, I just pray that your blessing would rest upon them. Lord, I thank you that this is going to be a week of self-awareness like never before. I think this is going to be a week of self-discovery. I think it's going to be a week of looking in the mirror and saying, Lord, what do you want to fix in me? So, Lord, I just thank you for people who are open to the power of the Holy Spirit that doesn't just, leave in the, that doesn't just live in the walls of this church, but lives in their walls at home. And so, Lord, I pray that they would take you with them that you would be with them, that you would cover them, that you would protect them. God, I'm praying great increase and expansion over them this year like never before. I think you're going to put them before doors that no man could shut, and they're going to be emotionally mature enough to walk through them. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Courageous church. We'll see you guys next week.